Thank you for all of those that have forgotten me already. I'm Mike Haas. <laughs> so I think Reed's did a nice job uh, characterizing Jesco and, and uh, Jesco's phenomenal outreach across the world. Now, I will tell you that you haven't really lived until you've been the manager that gets to sign all of Jesco's travel orders. <laughs> and just wonder, when are you going to get that visit to say, how did he do this again? Uh, but Jesco was always, uh, always seeking to reach out and, and, and spread the message of, of human spaceflight and the space program across the world. Uh, I thought I'd tell just a couple stories. I'm not going to tell the one that Meredith raised, so I no knowledge of, of those stories. You may hear that later. Uh, I thought I'd first talk about that daily report. How many here actually remember how that got started? I'm thinking maybe one. <laughs> it was the day that the progress ran into the mirror. <clears throat> and I walked into Will Trafton's morning tag up, and he said, you are going to write a report on what's going on on Mirror every day and have it to the White House by 7.30 in the morning. So we started, and we wrote a report, and I did it for a while. And at the time, we had a space station war room, and Jeff Bingham actually did it for a while. And we had a need to rotate it around, and all of a sudden, it rotated to Jesco. And it never rotated out. <laughs> I, you know, given raising the bar that high, I wasn't going to go anywhere near attempting to do that report again. And as Reed said, you know, I had signed the travel orders. I knew full well Jesco was nowhere around Washington, but the daily report still came out. And, you know, I might try an email and say, well, Jesco, where, what are you doing? Well, I'm skiing, but someone has to do the report. So the report would always come out. Um, but that's how it started. And Jesco did it faithfully uh, every day uh, that he was able. Uh, the other thing, and again, Reed broached it, something about persistence in, in capturing the memoirs, particularly of Boris Chertok. Personally, I remember that persistence a little bit more forcefully. Something about weeks and weeks of bludgeoning haws for a little bit of money to pay the translators to actually translate Boris's works from Russian so that then the history office would be able to, to publish them. And so we started that process uh, uh, and actually were able to, to use our uh, Russian translation contract to be able to, to translate Chertok's work. And it's just a, an outstanding, uh, outstanding venture. And then the last thing I would recount is, you know, sometimes we struggled to try to find what is the right thing to try to capture all of Jesko's energy uh, with his colleagues. And so at one point in the old Code M, uh, Dan Heaton and I struck on the idea that, you know, we have all of these folks that are policy analysts and folks, and they don't really understand spaceflight very well. So we asked Professor von Puttkammer to teach orbital mechanics to his colleagues. <laughs> it was actually a huge success. Jesco very, very diligently put together class plans and presentation material, got very frustrated when his students had to do other things and not show up for class. But we worked through all of that, and, and uh, I think the, the folks that actually went through most of Jesco's classes had, uh, had a great learning experience, uh, learning from a true master. So I thank you. Uh, Sam and Bill for having this and letting us all gather and, and remember Jesco, uh, an incredible person. Uh, as Gersh said, he's, Jesco was different, but he was just always Jesco.